If you're new to the project, a big warm welcome. If you're a tough old root, the welcome back. Here on Steep in the Woods, we live off grid on our own mountain. And this video covers start to finish 100% how we built our own A frame pallet chicken coop. We have our clamps holding it on this side. We're gonna put a couple screws on this one. That's still, that's probably as close as we're gonna get it. All right, so putting screws on this one just to hold the thing together while we, uh, while we put our nails in. That's the great thing about screws is they're reusable. I mean, they're just the way to go, possible. But after taking apart as many, many pallets as we have to build this house, I've got a lot of nails. All right, all our boards are pinned in place well enough to start nailing them. So hey, we nail them and uh, I'll paint the bottom again in more of a Appalachian red, red maple. Remove our clamps, remove our screws, and this piece is done. So we've got these four pallets attached. Uh, this is the coop section, right? This, is, this will be the part of the A-frame structure that's covered with roofing and is closed in from the elements. The other eight pallets are going to be the run. So this, this A-frame coop consists of one small coop and then a run, but it's all one single structure. So this part is done, sealed the bottom, nailed them together, we're ready to rock and roll. Uh, these pallets are a different style and size than, our, than the other eight that we're using. So I did have to cut uh, this top pallet down some, feels like eight or nine inches, but that way they're all the same height. So rock and roll, coop sections are done, let's work on the run. So as you can see, these are different pallets. Uh, just made use of what, what we have. Um, I left the bottom pallets, this is, so this end is closest to the ground. That's why the bottom of them is blocked off. That's also why I left all the boards on it uh, as added protection, right? A, a coon should not be able to fit through these boards. So it'll have to at least climb up to the top part before there's even enough space for it to gain entry. Uh, and that's completely negating the fact that there's going to be uh, chicken wire on this on this structure. Uh, but the top part, I pulled off a couple of these boards to allow in some light. Um, I didn't want to just build it out of solid pallets. That's not open enough for me. So the top pallets of the run have larger gaps in them. Uh, I think we can get away with that. I don't think there's going to be an increased danger of uh, you know, of, of animals gaining entry to this, um, but it'll allow in more light and more air. So that's why this top pallet looks different than the bottom one. So I don't necessarily want to bore y'all with, you know, a five hour video of me doing the same thing over and over. Um, only difference between these and the ones before it, other than the style of pallet and the fact that the top part is more open than the bottom part, is that it's got four runners. So we're going to use four of these shore boards versus the three that we used on the on the, the coop section, uh, but it's exactly the same every other way. Just you know, attaching them down with nails and clamps, 
or no, with screws and clamps, so then I can then nail them and remove that more expensive hard hardware. Uh, we want to save all our screws for our house, not for chicken coops. Although if I had the screws, I'd use them, uh, but we don't. So hey, save that stuff for what really matters. Now that we have our panels done, we're attaching the chicken wire. It's important for me to attach them um, as pleasing as possible to the eye. I know everyone, I mean, chicken wire stinks. It's a hard thing to put on uh, and have it look good, look correctly, not notice, you know, dramatic variations or loose points. So to do that, I'm using my staples. However, they're not the main attachment method. I will be using a sandwiching method on both of the sides and then uh, large washers and screws in crucial points where multiple uh, strands of chicken wire overlap. That's how we're actually going to hold this down securely. The staples are just here to pin it in place while we then put on our, our legitimate attachment methods. Uh, so I've lined up my chicken wire right along the top, made it as straight as possible. And then I'm going down and pinning the two bottom corners uh, at roughly in position and then using my hand or pliers to then get the bottom line as straight as possible. After which, I'll take pliers and I'll physically pull each little section of chicken wire tight. And hopefully, done correctly, this will look more pleasing than most chicken coops. It will look like we actually cared. Another point that I forgot to mention, because it's not really crucial to anyone who isn't mildly crazy. Um, I've got a small hammer here, and once I put in my staples, I'm going through and actually hitting them and, and, and making them all flush. Pulling it tight. Put a couple staples in it. Knock those flush. Now that we've got our main, our main middle support, Hold tight. I'm just going to work my way down, like say with this one right here. Pull him tight. Throw a staple there. As for time of filming this, it's been a long time since I've worked on the chicken coop. And Celia's actually took the initiative. She's decided she doesn't like the coop that we have. We need to finish that one. I will be here to help. I showed her how to do what she's doing here, uh, which is making washers. The cheapest washers you can buy, period. What are they made out of? Pennies. You get 100 washers for $1. All we gotta do is put holes in the middle. So Celia's gonna go ahead and do that. Um, and we'll use this as our main fastener in the chicken coop build. The best way to do this is with a bench vise, but I broke mine. How I could break a large bench vise, I don't know. Uh, so we're gonna be using the second best thing, which is vise grips. I've got these set to where, you know, I've got them set perfect for Celia. I did show her how to, how to use them. Um, and we can fit three pennies in the vise grip at once, put a hole right in the middle. Some reason four pennies don't work, two pennies is a waste of time, three is the perfect number. So she's got about five million to do, um, and I appreciate it, I appreciate that. This is actually a profitable venture here. Normal washer is about three cents, right? So for every one you make, we get three cents profit. Yep. So, walk and roll. Yep.
Celia has done an amazing job getting these perfectly level. We have two old decking boards here. We've, we've measured them, they are a perfect square. Uh, she dug down and made them level and equal. So the next step that we're going to do is put some chicken wire on top to prevent, uh, to prevent animals from digging under it. And we're gonna do that before we put the actual coop on top of these boards, that'll help hold it down. So the reason for these deck boards is they not only give us a nice flat foundation to put our coop on top of, but they're also kind of a sacrificial board. Uh, contact with dirt, contact with living soil is the quickest way to rot out wood. So we put these down first, they are treated, um, and, and they will rot first. That'll buy us some time before the coop itself starts to rot. So the next step is stapling down some chicken wire, and then we actually get to assemble the coop. Now that I've finished stapling the chicken wire to those, I'm going to attach these individual pieces with zip ties and then take some little like pin staple things we made and pin it to the ground. So go ahead and swing over. Set them down really easy right here. Straighten up a little bit. Yep. And then we're gonna roll them over. Set them right on the right in front of the board.
And there we go. They are cut. We got a nice foundation for the bottom of our floor. And dang, by, by this last one, I got really good at it. I got this one's great. Just had to hide the first one. Uh, we'll throw dirt on it or something. Nobody see it. I don't know which side was which, but I guess it don't matter. Look at that, man. Perfect. Perfectly perfect. For whatever reason, Celia is not quite comfortable doing this bit, but all we're going to do is pre-drill some holes at an angle going from the, the top to the bottom and the bottom to the top and then put some screws in them, attaching these flat boards to each other.
it's the job that's never started that takes forever to finish unless it's a chicken coop in which case you start it but it still takes forever to finish so that's why there is some amount of difference right this was started last year but thankfully since we utilize Appalachian red red maple or for those of you who don't know burnt motor oil we were able to store that this is good forever right we didn't have to finish it uh, so we just plugged away on it as we could same as with everything else even same as with our house when you're doing something all of this from scratch by yourself there is no accomplishing everything in one day you've got to just take it as you can split up your your a day do 30 minutes on every single project and by god eventually even if it's a year a year later you will finish it The last and final step of this coop build is installing the automatic chicken door. This project has taken absolutely forever. It's because we had more pressing projects, uh, but by God, we did get it finished. Now, this is an automatic chicken door. Link in the description. Uh, you guys, if, you, if it's the kind of thing you're interested in, I would definitely buy it. It's not a lot of money when you factor in years presumably, of, of, of lesser leg work to and from your coop to let the chickens out. So this coop is Fort Knox. The entire coop is sealed up and predator protected. Yes, it's just chicken wire, but I mean, that's, that's chicken wire. It's the name of it. But we've made this coop right here and it's got its own secondary door, right? So this should be the tank. At night, we should have zero issues of predators, even those predators that may get through our chicken wire. All you do is put it somewhere with some amount of uh, sun, um, set your time and screw it on. Yeah, we got ours to close at 9.30 and to open at 6. Rock and roll, the tank.
And there you have it. That's how we did our own A-frame pallet chicken coop. It was stupid cheap, although surprisingly complex to be such a simple deal. It did take forever to build, but our chickens are very happy. They are the absolute best breed of Bantam chickens you can, you can buy. Uh, we are going to sell fertile eggs at some point in the future, and I would tell you it would be worth that price, even with the added shipping, shipping fees. Um, a big thank you to the Tough Old Roots who sent us chicken wire. And if you would like your own automatic chicken door, click right here and pick one up. I can tell you it's absolutely worth it. And always remember, if you liked what you saw, hit that button. If you're new to the project, hit that other button. You don't support the project, there are links below. If you'd like a private consultation or you have a question you want me to answer, email us directly and I'll see you next time here. Steve in the Woods.